Good afternoon, welcome back. Be sure you like, subscribe, and follow. Sorry if you get tired of me saying that, but I'm required by YouTube law now to repeat it in every uh, video. Uh, so anyway, uh, be sure to keep an eye out on the Facebook page this month for a free frankincense giveaway if you're in our doTERRA bundle set. Uh, so today we're going to talk about this oil called uh, Majorum, uh, this little guy. Uh, the health benefits of Majorum essential oils can be attributed to its properties as a uh, multiple use oil. And I'm going to go through this really fast and uh, all the words are going to pop up and you're going to be over so overloaded you won't know what to do in the next 10 seconds. Are you ready? So this oil is a... If you got all that, fantastic. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Uh, rewind and play it again. And that's a lot all at once. Um, so this oil, it's immensely helpful if used correctly. That's why I'm going to put that. Um, and if you don't know what any of those words mean, it's fine. We're going to break it down here. Um, because if you don't understand what something means, there's no reason for you to try it or reason for you to be just throw it over your shoulder and ignore it for the rest of your life. That's what I do, you know. I don't know what that is. I'm going over here. So what makes this little bottle such a impact? A little guy with a big punch. That's what this guy is. So to start with, um, Majorum reduces pain. It's a muscle spasm, it prevents sepsis, and it can be effective in curing infections caused by viruses and alignments associated with them, such as the common cold, the influenza, mums, measles, and even pox. Majorum oil may be very good for the functioning of your brain also. There's uh, started to do studies on that. Uh, this quality uh, also... Uh, relieves you of headaches, um, not migraines, headaches, and there is a big difference, and I will have a video up in a few weeks here explaining the difference of a headache versus a, um, a migraine. You can also check out my blog. Uh, it'll have an entire scientific paper up there on what the difference between, and it's usually based off of where it uh, spawns inside your head. So back to Majorum. Um, it induces a calming and relaxing sedative effect on both the mind and body while relie relieving n the nervous system from stress and anxiety. So that's why it helps a lot of this stuff. Um, it can also generate a happy feeling while your uh, brain is being... You think you're angry and sad, the Majorum kind of overpowers your brain and tells you, no, it's fine, just calm down. Um, this property can be helpful uh, to passive people who have suffered from um, shocks or traumatic incidences, uh, major setbacks in life, and that does not always include a death. Um, a major setback could be your car died and you just got fired on the same day and your kid needs to go to school, but school's going to cost them $100 because they upped the taxes and the city's no longer doing free schools. That's a major setback all in one day. It's very, it's very stressful, and it's, it's, most people have major setbacks at least once a year. That's, they just do. Uh, now, with all the things that Majorum is believed to be helpful with, um, it's even more common among people uh, who uh, need it for assisting with uh, the cardiovascular system. Which, if kept under control, the cardiovascular system uh, reduces your chances of heart attack, strokes, and hemorrhaging, uh, both in the brain, which is not good. Uh, brain hemorrhage, uh, you get blood, and it's, no, don't go to sleep with a brain hemorrhage. You're not probably going to wake up. Uh, um, so, let's go back here for a minute. A lot of people don't know what cardiovascular system is, what it all entails. You'll go to the doctor, they'll be like, well, your cardiovascular system's doing great. Or they'll be like, well, we need to take a look at your cardiovascular system. Well, what does cardiovascular actually mean? So the cardio, most people consider that, you know, cardio, I'm going to go run some, I'm going to do some fun stuff. That is not what it means in cardiovascular, okay? Cardiovascular system is a medical term, and it's the system that's responsible for delivering blood from, you, from your heart to the other parts of your body. 
the heart is a muscle. It's the biggest muscle in your body. I don't care who you are. You can, you can have the biggest thighs and the biggest arm muscles that you want, but your heart is the biggest muscle in your body. It just is outright because your heart has to be able to pump all that blood to all your other muscles or you're just going to be a twig and a stick and you're just going to lay there limp like a piece of jelly. Okay? That and no bones. So uh, the cardiovascular system, cardio being your heart, and the vascular part is your vessels, which include your arteries and your veins and the blue and the red stuff in the pretty picture books that you don't know what's going on in. The blue and the red lines. When you see the skeleton with the part, the blue and the red lines are veins and arteries. So now that you know what a cardiovascular system is, if your cardiovascular system is working and functioning properly, you have a lower chance of heart attacks, strokes, brain issues, both strokes and hemorrhaging. Um, you also have a better chance of living longer because you don't have those medical problems. So Majorum is um, believed and sought out by traditional med medicine um, to be a, a cure-all, you could say, um, to keep your cardiovascular system working. Um, think of it as um, if you have a dried up plant and you give it water, sunlight, and good soil, 90% of the time it might come back. Um, if it's too far gone though, it's not going to come back. So you can think of it like that. Majorum is kind of like your, your water, sunshine, and potting soil for uh, a plant. Um, you being the plant, I, in case you didn't get that in there. Um, so if we think about this for a minute, um, U.S. adults, so adults only in the United States in 2020, because anything, uh, anything before 2020, I'll, I'm okay taking statistics from. Anything between 2020 and current, it's all COVID. Just that, that's what I'm finding. It, well, they died of COVID. They had a heart attack because of COVID. No, not really. We're not going to go into this, but my statistics are all pre-COVID based. So, uh, 2020, uh, U.S. adults with, n with a known history of heart attacks is 4.6. All right, that's not too bad. 4.6% of the population has a known heart attack problem. Well, what if I put that number into perspective? So, there's roughly... 258 million adults above the age of 18. Now, below the age of 18, you can get a heart attack still, but it's very rare. Um, so above the age of 18, there's roughly 258 million adults in America in 2020. Not bad, right? Okay, so out of those 258 people, um, the number 4.6%, that just, you know, translates to about 11.5 million people. Who have a known history of a heart attack or stroke something wrong with the cardiovascular problem um, now granted you know oh that's only like 12 million people who have a known history of, of a heart attack or a cardio problem or something well what about the people who don't know they have a history of cardio problems what about the people who have their families never had cardio problems, but they have an underlying uh, condition that could cause them to have a heart attack at the age of 42. Well, we don't count them because they don't have a known history of a cardiovascular problem. Granted, you can't count the entire population. Well, you could have a heart attack. Yes, everybody is capable of having a heart attack at any given time. As an EMT, which I am, uh, this is a very good thing. When we have people who don't want to ride the ambulance, we go through a whole list, um, in Illinois at least, and we tell them, if we leave, the worst thing that can happen is you die. This is 100% true. The worst thing that can happen is this patient dies. It's true. Whether that's a heart attack, a stroke, you fell and hit your head too hard, you, uh, your wife got angry at you and cut you up in small pieces and fed you to the dog, I don't, you know, the worst thing that will happen if we leave is you can die. Do we count every single person that we have in contact as a possible death? No. We count the people who we see three, four times a day, we see five, six times a week, and they have 
20 things wrong with them. They're on hospice. They should probably be in a home or somebody needs to be with them at all times to keep an eye on them because they have so many medical problems or the sheet of medicine they're on is longer than my grocery list most weeks. We consider those ones that 4.6%. Now granted, those people that we see all the time, they're always calling, we always see them as first responders. Those people, yes, they have a higher chance of being called for 911. However, that doesn't include the random car accident that happens and we have three fatalities. I've never had that car accident and I hope I never have that car accident, but I have no, I know that that is probable. You can have a car accident that was a complete accident on everybody's part and you have fatalities. The same thing is the way the cardiovascular system works. You could be 100% healthy and you pull the muscle, the wrong muscle, and you go in and you talk to your chiropractor and your doctor and they're like, oh, you're fine. You go to bed and, you know, three weeks later you wake up and have a mild heart attack. Was it because of your muscle issue or did you just have a, a, a pre-existing condition that you weren't aware of because uh, you didn't know to ask anybody and it caused the minor heart attack? Now, that 4.6% also doesn't include anybody with minor heart attacks. So if you've had a major heart attack, you're in that percent. If you've had a minor heart attack, you're not in that percent, especially if you've only had one. It's just the way they do statistics, because statistically, if you've had one minor heart attack, it will lead to multiple more or a large heart attack. But you're not in there yet. They, they kind of push you over. They're like, well, we're not going to put you in there because you only had one. Okay, it, it's like potato chips. You can't just have one. Just can't. That's a terrible way to put it. But if you have a one minor heart attack, chances are later in your life, you can get another one more likely than somebody else. Okay. I'm done with my medical rant, sorry. Uh, so, back to Majorum. Um, what if we could help half the number of people in the United States who have a history, a history of heart problems? Half, well, that's helping six million people. Think about that. You tell people about this one thing and you let them know that if you take this, correctly, you have a less of a chance of having cardiovascular problems. Well, you know, probably half of those aren't going to listen to you. And probably half of the other half are going to blow you off. So we're down to a quarter. But two million people, uh, a quarter of six is two for you non-math people. Two million people. If we could keep two million people from getting heart attacks every year because they decided to try an oil and they don't have to eat it. They could diffuse it. They could eat it in their water, whatever. If they try it and 2 million people live 15 years longer, 30 years longer, never have a heart attack in the first place. That means something. You did something. You helped people. You're not saving a life right there you're not making giving birth to a baby you're not climbing mount everest but you did something you made a difference to two million people and that's only if you do a quarter if you do more great hooray but if we don't let people know that this is a possible way to keep you from having a heart attack ever uh, to start with or if you've had one minor and you take this stuff and it'll keep you from having more minor heart attacks fantastic. So one thing that uh, that a lot of people don't know about oils is as everything there are negatives and there are positives and I'm not going to tell you lies here. Majorum has been known to cause cancer. Now don't pause the video. Don't, don't be like oh my god I'm going to get cancer if I take this stuff. No, no. There are many things in the world that can cause cancer. Being a firefighter, you can get cancer. Being in a fire, you can get cancer. Just being around it. You know, you're watching somebody's house burn and putting it on YouTube. Woo, this is cool. You could get cancer from 20 miles down the road. You could. Uh, if you didn't know, couches nowadays, um, they are no longer made out of cotton. 
Most of them are made from plastic and, and synthetics. Um, that can cause cancer, um, especially if it gets ignited or if you accidentally ingest it as a child. Kids like to eat things, okay? Those synthetic things that we have in our house, everything's made of plastic now. Plastic. There's no wood. There's no cotton. There's, that's not a thing. It's all plastic, particle board, chemicals, everything. Most things in the world can cause cancer. In certain parts of the world, breathing will give you cancer. We're not going to name countries, but you know which ones they are. So just because I tell you, this oil has been known to cause cancer. Don't scare yourself into never trying it. Most of the studies that have shown that this oil causes cancer, this oil was taken in great amounts. Now, when I say great amounts, I mean you took the whole bottle in, in 20 minutes. Okay, don't, no. That's not how this is supposed to be taken. One drop, two drops at most. That's it. You're not supposed to overdose. Overdosing can kill you on most things. Um, now this means, uh, that if you get cancer after taking this, this is not the reason you got cancer if you're taking this properly. Um, you can still get cancer. Cancer is a, a million ways of explaining what cancer is, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. I don't understand how cancer works, I just know that it kind of picks whoever it wants whenever it wants. That's what it does, and it sucks. And people don't like to talk about cancer. I know people who have cancer. I know people who have beaten cancer. I know people who have not beaten cancer. It sucks. So the fact that you are told that, yes, this oil can cause cancer when taken in large amounts. Don't take it in large amounts. Take it in small amounts. Moderate your consumption. Everything is good for you in moderations. Too much fruit is bad for you. Have you ever drank a... Uh, Felt like drinking a whole gallon of apple juice? I have. Um, you regret it the next day when you don't leave the bathroom. Just putting that out there. Same with plums or dates. Um, doctors tell you, eat vegetables, eat fruit. Well, in moderations. Eat them in moderation. Same with an oil. Moderate. You can't just start taking, you know, your doctor says, well, you need to take some omeprazole because you get heartburn pretty good. You're not going to take the whole box of omeprazole when you get home. Okay, that's that's excessive. Um, it's like people taking aspirin for headaches. Please stop taking aspirin for headaches. Aspirin is not designed for, for headaches. Aspirin is designed for um, blood flow. Do not take aspirin for headaches. Take lavender instead. Please take take something else. And if medication decides, if aspirin is the only thing that cures your headache, take something else, please. So now that I've got it, so just because it can cause cancer doesn't mean it's going to cause cancer in everybody. It's just been found that if you take this in great amounts, you can get cancer. If you don't take it, you can still get cancer. I'm just putting that one out there, too, in case, you know, like, well, if I don't take it, I won't get cancer. No, no, no. You can still get cancer if you take it or if you don't take it. It's kind of a roll of a dice at this point. It's like COVID. Uh, you can get it by staying home. Or you can get it by going, doing your day-to-day. -day, like, it's like the flu. Um, if you have a kid, you're getting the flu. I don't care how immune you are to the flu. If you have a child, you're probably getting the flu at least once a year. Sorry. Um... Uh, so definitely take this in moderations. Don't be scared because I said it has cancer of properties that have been known to cause cancer cells to develop. I don't know the science behind it. If you want me to look into the science behind it, I would be happy to research that for you. Um, not a big person about learning about cancer, but I would definitely go to a hospital and talk to a doctor about how cancer cells develop just for you guys and do a whole video of them talking to me. Let me know below in the comments if you really want to know how cancer cells are are developed. Is that the right word? Developed? Um, formed? I don't know what that proper term is. Um, so if you do it in moderations, um, start with a drop once or twice a week. Um, you don't need a lot. 
Um, especially if you never had cardiovascular, um, you definitely don't need a lot. Um, if you've had a major heart attack, definitely start with a small amount because your body is already um, unbalanced. Um, and so think of it as when you're a child, you're up here. This is the perfect spot to be right here. Everybody wants to be here. Jimmy's up there. Timmy's up there. Sarah's up there. Everybody's up there. Well, as you get older and you start stop exercising because you're not running around like a crazy person anymore. You eat hot pockets and, and microwave oven dinners because you're working 17 hour days because nobody wants to work and everybody who is working is working way overtime. Getting down here. That's a lot. It's a lot of difference. Well, if you have this level already, so we're gonna bring this, this is now the standard of adulthood. It's down here. And you have a cardiovascular problem. You're probably about here, unfortunately. So now we've brought this back down here. So your immune system and your uh, white cell count and your body uh, being able to cope with changes, abrupt changes, kind of like weather. If you if you own an older person or if you've broken a bone, if the weather gets cold, your bone aches. It's it's an abrupt change that your body is trying to adjust to. That's why. Um, so taking an oil so fast and your body can't be like, what the hell is this? Um, it, uh, it needs time to, to realize what it needs to do with this oil. So don't take it all at once. Don't, please. Um, don't take a whole bunch throughout the week because you think it's going to work faster. That's not how it works. Um, things take time. Um, and this is, you won't see... A difference if you have heart attacks a lot which I hope nobody does but if you do and you start taking it and you're like I'm still having a minor heart attack at least once every two months well it's gonna take some time to work and depending on the type of heart attack you have or stroke or um, whatever else problem you might be having um, you might not see effects until a year later because your body's trying to work in the oil to co collaborate with your existing body. So if you take it once a week, put it in um, your favorite dish when cooking. Have your wife put it in there when she's cooking. Um, or place it one drop in a diffuser at night. It diffuses. Do it once a week. Fantastic. Um, you can also add it to water. It might not taste the best, but you can. Um, and you can add other flavored things, uh, to it as well. You know, like those little Mio's things. Make it kiwi strawberry or grape or I don't know what flavors there are. Black cherry. One of the work, my employees like black cherry. Employees, co-workers likes black cherry. I used to have employees. Uh, <laughs> so add it to things that you are okay with eating anyway. It will mellow the taste. You won't taste it as much. Um, one to two drops at most to start with, once a week. After a few weeks, try twice a week. But don't ever go past more than two drops twice a week um, unless you are, have sat down and talked to a uh, expert on essential oils, which you are welcome to come into the office at any time, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm here alone a lot. Uh, unless the office is open, then I get my fun employer and my nice co-workers uh, so try the Majorum order a bottle stop by touch wellness ask me about it I can make you up a smaller bottle if you can't afford the big bottle from doTERRA um, try it if somebody you know you think they really need it say you you think your husband really needs to use this and he's like I'm not using that stuff he doesn't know he's eating won't hurt him I guess because if you put a drop in cooking, which I do with my fiance, um, I put a drop of oregano and I put a drop of lemon in it because he went overseas and he came back and he said stomach problems and I started doing that and he has less stomach problems now. It's not completely gone, but he has less. But he's not realized because if I tell him, he will, he will tell me he doesn't want to eat it because he doesn't know what it is and... Uh, I need him healthy. I care about him. Please do not poison people. I'm not telling you to poison people, but one drop a week. That will 
your heart will thank you very much, which people that you love and people who love you, whether you're not, you can stand to, around them or not, will be very thankful. So uh, with all of that, it's very emotional today, I'm sure. Um, I thought, I hope it was very informative for you. Um, we're going to, I will see you next week. And uh, be sure to keep an eye on the Facebook page, as I said. And uh, stop in the office anytime. We are doing a coloring contest um, starting Monday for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so stop by and grab a coloring contest. We're going to be giving away some cool stuff. There's a tool set that we're giving away if a guy wins. And there's... Um, there's a fun little basket we have filled with stuff for kids. And then I think we're doing a spa thing if a female wins. Um, or I guess, you know, you can just be like, I want this one. If you win, you win. I mean, take what you want. But be sure to stop in for that. Also, be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you subscribe or you come in and uh, pick up the doTERRA supplement bundle here at Touch of Wellness, you're put into the running to win a free doTERRA uh, essential oil. And uh, anybody who did that last year, last year, last month in February, in January, this February, I can't talk. Uh, anybody who did that last January, this February, we're giving away the uh, frankincense bottle. So we'll be doing that uh, here in a few days. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye on Facebook for the, the live wheel. And yes, it will be live, so you guys can't think I'm cheating. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye on that. And uh, if you haven't uh, done that yet, be sure to uh, sign up, subscribe to the channel. And I would be happy to uh, put you on the list of possible winners. Uh, we can ship it to you, or you can come and pick it up. So you do not have to be in uh, in the area of Morton to uh, to be a subscriber. So thanks.